Our story begins in the year of 1284, within the town of Hamlin. It was an average morning until an ear-piercing scream woke up the entire town. <coughs> the townspeople rushed outside only to suddenly stop at their doorways. Rats, rats as far as the eye could see, crowded the streets. The town of Hamlin was infested with a plague of rats. The mayor was disgusted. How dare these vermin ransacked my precious cheese? Something has to be done. Over the next few weeks, the townspeople initiated plan after plan to get rid of their plague. Sadly, every plan met with a disappointing failure. The rats were just too smart and too numerous. It was May 26 when the town of Hamlin received a visitor. He was dressed in a long, colorful coat made of fine silk. On top of his head laid a floppy bright hat, and attached to his side was a small fife made of wood. The man walked up to town hall, only to stop at the door and listen to the townspeople screaming and arguing with each other. We should leave town, yelled the butcher. I refuse to leave, screamed the baker. Maybe we should feed you to the rats screeched the baker's wife. Everyone, we can discuss this without violence, pleaded the mayor. Suddenly, the door flew wide open. Excuse me, but I couldn't help but hear that you have a rat problem. Who are you? I have gone by rat catcher and rat and fanga. But you may call me the Pied Piper, my dear sir. Rat catcher? You can catch rats. For a certain price, I can indeed catch rats. And what is your price? Hmm, for a town this big, filled with this many rats, my price would be 1,000 guilders. 1,000? The people of Hamlin would give you 50,000 guilders if you could remove the rats, said the mayor with the townspeople agreeing. Oh, is that a promise? Asked the piper with a smile. Of course. Then we must shake on it, for that is how promises are made official. Word of warning though, I am a man who takes promises extremely seriously. If a promise isn't kept, there will always be consequences, said the grinning piper. I'll have you know that the people of Hamlin are people of their words. And so the Pied Piper walked to the middle of town, grabbed his fife and brought it up to his lips. Slowly, a soft sound began to flutter throughout the town. Immediately, the rats began to sway, and as the sound echoed louder and louder, the rats became completely entranced. Gathering all the mesmerized rats, the piper began to lead them out of Hamlin towards the river. As the piper walked into the riverbank, the rats followed him, dancing and wiggling in joy with the music. That day, not a single rat came out of the river. The town of Hamlin was now rat-free. The townspeople cheered with glee and excitement. People of Hamlin, now that our town is free from the vermin, let us regrow, and more importantly, let us make more cheese, proclaimed the mayor. The townspeople shouted and applauded. Excuse me, good sir, but I believe you and your town now owe me something. Fifty thousand guilders, I believe, said the grinning piper. The shouts and cries of excitement stopped. Now, now, my good man, our town is in need of rebuilding. If we were to pay you the full sum now, Hamlin would have to deal with rough times. I'm sorry, my good sir, but that is the amount we agreed upon. The amount you and the townspeople promised me. And how do we know that you aren't the cause of the rats? You controlled them so easily. Who's to say that you didn't send them here to our town in the first place? With that accusation, the townspeople roared in agreement. 
and the piper's smile sunk into a serious scowl. Fine, said the piper. I'll make you regret asking for my help, Oathbreakers. Let us see how you enjoy the consequences. And so the Pied Piper walked out of Hamlin that day with a devious smirk upon his face. Over the next month, the town rebuilt and became happy again. On June 26th, the day known as St. John's and St. Paul's Day, all the adults in town gathered in the church, leaving all the children to play amongst the town's streets, unsupervised. At noon, the Pied Piper walked to the middle of the town, pulled out his fife, and brought it up to his lips. Slowly, the soft music began to flutter throughout the town yet again. But this time it was the children of the town who became mesmerized by the sweet music. The piper then began to walk out of town along a single street. Following him in a dancing trance was 131 children, including the mayor's daughter. Only one child stayed behind, for he was deaf and could not hear the piper's hypnotizing sound. At day's end, the adults emptied the church, only to find the children missing. Panicking parents searched, but only the deaf child was found. He told the adults that all the children had followed the piper out of the town. Looks of horror flew to their faces. Immediately, the mayor ordered for search parties to be sent out. The townspeople searched for hours and eventually came upon one of the children near a cave. The child had recently broken her leg and so had lagged behind. The girl told them how she had seen them following the silly dressed man into the cave. The adults entered and searched its entire depths, but not a single child or the Pied Piper were ever seen again. To this very day, that single street that the Pied Piper led the children away on is known as the Street Without Drumming. No dancing or music may be played on that street, for it is the last place the children were ever seen. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, then please consider subscribing to my channel. There's plenty more videos of mythology, folklore, and fairy tales on the way, so please subscribe. Until next time.